Hey everyone, how's it going? This is a Pokemon I've actually been really excited to try and do a run with, because Aerodactyl is pretty unique. What makes Aerodactyl so unique is its typing. It is a fast Rock-type Pokemon, and generally speaking, Rock-type Pokemon, even after Generation 1, are quite slow. It has a whopping base 130 speed, which means it has a 25% chance to crit any time it attacks. Its attack at base 105 is not bad either, and its other stats, while not great, aren't awful. What does suck is the move pool. It's not great. It's not as bad as Scyther, but there aren't any rock moves Aerodactyl can learn, and the best flying move it gets arguably is Fly, which takes two turns. The move pool might hold it back, but I wonder whether its stats are good enough to give Aerodactyl a solid time. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps out the channel. And we're going to be doing a month of these videos starting in November. I've made a sub goal, but now we're just going to be doing it. So that'll be fun. I'll announce more about that later. But right now, let's focus on the Aerodactyl run. I battled all the trainers in Viridian Forest, Rival 1A, and the trainer in Brock's gym. But I wasn't too worried about Brock this time around. While Aerodactyl only gets Wing Attack, which is only base 35 power, it is itself a Rock type, meaning it's going to resist Brock's normal moves. This includes Geodude's Tackle, which is only doing 2 damage. I also do crit 25% of the time, so even with all those defense curls, I can knock it out with quite a lot of HP left. For Onyx, I should be using Agility when it goes for Bide, and I can go for Wing Attack a little bit, but it will start to lower my HP. I'm going to be quite honest with you, this is looking really good. I mean, I do mess up a couple times going for Wing Attack when I shouldn't, but as long as I don't make too, too many mistakes, things should be fine. Unfortunately, however, I miscalculated slightly. I thought that two Wing Attacks would knock out Onyx. It didn't. Bite hit and Aerodactyl lost. So I might have been able to first try victory this at level 10, and unsurprisingly, we're going to fast forward ahead a little bit, I was actually able to second try victory. It just simply was a matter of being patient. This Geodude took a really long time, I just couldn't seem to get crits, and unlike last time, the defense curls were fairly early. Onyx decided to attack a little bit more than it did the last time, which is very annoying, but overall, its inability to do damage outside of Bide, led to me having a relatively easy time against Brock. The first time this has ever happened when I'm using a not very effective move, and so this did give me a little bit of optimism going forward. That said, as optimistic as I was, I wasn't going to go defeat Misty with a rock Pokemon at my level, so I decided to battle Rival 2 instead. Wing Attack is doing about a quarter. Thankfully, Pidgeotto goes for Gust and Quick Attack, so I'm able to knock it out without having my accuracy dropped, and with that, even if Squirtle does decide to go for Bubble or something, it's not going to be a huge deal, and I'm easily able to defeat Rival 2 on my very first attempt. After breezing through Nugget Bridge, I decide to try Misty just to see if it would work. Turns out it didn't. Thankfully, Wing Attack is doing half to star you, but after trying to go for Agility to boost my attack for Badge Boost, I still was only doing about a quarter to star me, even with a critical hit, it wasn't going to help because Bubble Beam did so much damage. Aerodactyl was easily knocked out. Speaking of doing a lot of damage, Star U was able to do enough damage that's setting up agility. While it did boost my attack, it wasn't enough. There's an explanation in the description why agility boosts my attack. It's called the Badge Boost Glitch. I've gone over it quite a few times, but yeah, we're not going to be able to defeat Misty now. Instead, I'm going to go ahead down to Vermilion City and battle Rival 3 on the SSN. I mean, Rival 2 is pretty easy. Unfortunately, I should mention, I can't learn Body Slam. That would be amazing, but no luck. We're going to be stuck with Wing Attack for now, but we should be fine. I get a clutch critical hit against Pidgeotto turn 1. It goes for Gust and then Quick Attack. That's okay, I just didn't want to see Sand Attack, so we knock it out with only 8 HP lost. We get another useful crit against Raticate. Funny enough, that's actually three in a row, but like I said, 25% chance, not crazy. And after we knock it out, Kadabra, even though it can't attack us, it still has horrible defense. It actually does survive the wing attack, but the rival uses a retroactive potion. So I'm going to be able to knock out Kadabra. I make it to War Turtle. Once again, I get a very useful crit. It goes for Bubble, doesn't do too much. 
I'm not able to knock out War Turtle with my next wing attack, unsurprisingly, but Water Gun doesn't do all that much, and even after the speed drop of Bubble, I'm able to outspeed and knock out War Turtle. Another first try victory. Now, since I haven't defeated Misty, I can't battle Surge even if I wanted to, which I wouldn't, because I'm unable to use Cut outside of battle, so I really do need to beat Misty here, and hopefully the levels I've gained in the SSN allow me to do that relatively easily. I use Wing Attack versus Staryu. It does very good damage. Water Gun doesn't do too much, and I knock it out with 54 HP remaining. Unfortunately, Starmie is still going to be a nightmare. I'm not doing half damage, barely over a third. Water Gun does more than enough. I think Bubble Beam would have knocked me out. I do get somewhat lucky that Starmie uses an X-Defend instead of knocking me out this turn, but X-Defend is kind of a double-edged sword because, yeah, I don't knock it out, and it's able to use Water Gun. I'm close, but not close enough. In my next battle, it starts off pretty much the same way. I go for Wing Attack, Staryu goes for Water Gun, I'm at 55 HP. But this time after I go for Wing Attack, Starmie immediately goes for X Defend. I hit with Wing Attack again. Starmie is going to knock me out after this next attack. Thankfully, it didn't get a crit. But then I get the crit. I knock Starmie out. I know it's lucky, but I'm going to take this. Little luckier than I'd like, but hey. It's a 1 in 4 chance that we get a critical hit. And wouldn't you know, I attacked 4 times, I got 1 critical hit. Sounds reasonable enough to me, so I'm going to move on and head to Celadon City. Before I do, there is one trainer I love to talk about, the obnoxious hiker in Rock Tunnel with two Geodude and a Graveler. Now, the reason I want to talk about him is pretty funny. Typically, I want to knock out these Pokemon before they use Self-Destruct. This time, however, because I'm a Rock Pokemon, I actually want them all to use Self-Destruct and use it fairly early because Rock Throw is the far more dangerous attack. Wing attack would take forever to knock these Pokemon out, so it took a couple attempts, literally took two, for them to all use self-destruct early on. But yeah, I had more than enough HP. I even bought a super potion so I'd be able to heal, and we can make our way to Celadon. Because I'm a flying type, I decide to battle Erica right away. I go for wing attack, it does about half, but not quite. I don't actually knock out Victory Bell, it's able to put me asleep and knock me out. Wow, that didn't go at all how I thought it would. And unfortunately, I battled Erica about five more times. Turns out, there's really no way Wing Attack would be a 2 KO. And I would likely have to come back because although Fly is more powerful, it's just base 70 power, which would do the same as two Wing Attacks, aka wouldn't be enough to knock out Victory Bell. So it turns out I'm going to have to actually do the Rocket Game Corner first. Now, I'm a little worried about Giovanni because I don't have a good move to use. I can use Fly, but it's only doing about, what, 20%? I could try to use Wing Attack and get crits, which means I can attack more, but Onyx knows Rock Throw, and eventually it starts to whittle away my health. I only have 10 remaining. Rhyhorn doesn't have a Rock move but it's still able to knock me out because I just took too many hits from Onyx. In my next attempt, I try to use Agility to boost my attack a little bit, but it didn't work. I also have Swift, which even though it's a normal type, it actually does do more damage than Wing Attack, but I've run out of PP and it doesn't really matter anyway. We just simply are not doing enough damage to Onyx, and it's dealing way too much damage to me. Now, I do know a way I could fix this, but it would require me to leave the rocket hideout and come back later. Something I really don't want to do. But after trying this four more times unsuccessfully, I realized that for the first time I think ever, Giovanni 1 is going to require me to come back. So after breezing through the first third of the game, Aerodactyl has hit a major roadblock. But my strategy to beat Giovanni actually relies on beating another gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. Why? Because after I defeat Surge, when I use Agility, I won't just gain a little attack, I'll also gain a little defense, and that should probably help me. But of course, in order for this to work, I actually have to beat Lieutenant Surge, who is the electric type gym leader using a flying Pokemon with Swift as my best move for now. Honestly, I was so nervous about losing to Lieutenant Surge, I actually decided to go back and battle Erica. 
Now Fly should one-shot Victory Bell, and it does. I don't really care if it one-shots Tangela. I can use Agility a few times. I would prefer to one-shot Vileplume, but I don't know if I will. I try to get Constrict to give me a Speed Drop. These badge boosts activate anytime my stats are modified, so a Speed Drop counts as much as a Speed Boost, and I can even use Agility again. So I have five badge boosts, and I'm easily able to knock out Vileplume, although I got a critical hit. So in the end, didn't even end up mattering. I just wasted a bunch of time. That said, I was able to first try Erica at this level, so I'll take it. Unfortunately, since I don't have the Thunder Badge, I have to walk out of her gym and walk all the way to Vermilion City. I do need to use the fresh water and get through Saffron anyway, but this is why battling Lieutenant Surge later really stinks. It definitely does waste a bit of time to have to walk from usually Celadon all the way down to Vermilion. Alright, well, against Lieutenant Surge, I'm going to set up Badge Boost by using Agility. Voltorb goes for Sonic Boom. I set up another one, it goes for Sonic Boom again, and wouldn't you know, three times. I actually misclicked, so it gets to use Sonic Boom a fourth time. That's great. Swift will knock it out, so we'll make it to Pikachu. Awful defense, so we'll knock it out, and hopefully we one-shot Raichu? We don't. Unfortunately, Raichu attacks me, and even if I had all my health, it probably would have come close to one-shotting. This looks bad, but I actually have a pretty decent idea for how to beat Lieutenant Surge without needing to level up at all. Once again, I'm going to need to set up all three agility, but this time Voltorb goes for Screech. I might need two Screeches in order for this to work, but I'm not going to... Oh, there we go. Second Screech. Okay, this should work. We're going to one-shot everything. Here's Raichu, and there we go. You can see the badge boost glitch in action. Each one gives me another 12.5%, and while I don't know if I needed the second one, it certainly didn't hurt. And we have the Thunder Badge, and that means we can go back into Celadon, we can actually fly now, and we can battle Giovanni once again. Just like against Surge, we're going to go for Agility. This time, Rock Throw starts doing less and less damage, and we're at 51 HP. We get a critical hit, and then we can see Fly doing more damage than before. We're able to knock out Onyx in three hits. Unfortunately, after we hit with Fly against Rhyhorn, it looks like it's also going to be three hits, but thankfully, it doesn't seem to be doing too much damage to me, and so I can make it to Kangaskhan with 33 HP remaining. I go for Fly, and Giovanni uses Guard Spec. The turn I hit, I do about half. That's perfect. Comet Punch doesn't do nearly enough, and so long as we don't miss, there is a 5% chance that Fly misses. We will win. We don't miss. We even get a crit, and we finally defeat Giovanni number one. Not usually a trainer that causes me trouble, but hey, one of the reasons I don't get bored of these runs is that everyone is a little different. This time, Giovanni 1 was difficult. Definitely not something I anticipated, and who knows in the next run, which trainer will end up being a major obstacle. One trainer I don't think should be an obstacle in this run is Rival 4. Typically, this is one of the easiest major battles in the game. I decide to set up one agility. I don't know if that was necessary, because I'm going to go for Fly. Pidgeotto thankfully doesn't lower my accuracy and we knock it out. We use Fly against Growlithe, one hit KO. I use Swift by accident, I meant to go for Wing Attack. But it's going to be a two hit KO, Barrage was fine. Swift is going to knock out Kadabra. Against Wartortle I go for Fly, and the critical hit may have mattered, but who cares. Like I said, Rival 4 is going to be easy, and unlike other Pokemon with bad movesets, at least Aerodactyl has a flying move so I don't even need to worry about the channelers in Pokemon Tower, and we can move on to Fuchsia City. I'm going to go battle Koga, and I could set up agilities, but it might, yeah, I got poison, that's why it's a bad idea. I do know Swift, so I'm not worried about my accuracy being lowered, but it's a 3 KO, even with 4 badge boosts. Muck's going to be even worse, and so my plan to try and use Fly and avoid a self-destruct, I don't think it's going to work here. Yeah, I don't think I'm even going to make it past coughing number two, and I don't. So, probably not good to set up against coughing number one. So, in the very next attempt, instead of going for agility, I'm just going to go for fly. It does about half, and coughing sets up an X attack. So, I'm at full HP for Muck. Muck uses an X attack as well after I land, and it does use sludge, does decent damage, but I'm at 83 HP going to the final coughing. It also uses an X attack after I use Fly, 
And so all I need is for Weezing to use self-destruct. Well, and this might not shock you, while I'm in the air, of course, Koga goes for the X attack. And when I hit with Fly, Weezing, of course, goes for self-destruct. With an X attack, I should... Oh! I'm not knocked out! Wow! I figured with 80 HP and an X attack, I surely was going to lose. But hey, go Aerodactyl. That was really good. Wasn't the plan. My plan was to fly over the self-destruct, but this worked too. And now that we've defeated Koga, we get to battle everyone's favorite trainer, Rival Fival. All right, so he leads off with Pidgeot. I decide to try to go for agility, and of course I'm hit by Sand Attack. I might as well just set up all my agilities, and now I have to go for Swift. It's 60 base power, obviously not as good as Fly, and then I level up anyway, making this totally useless. Swift is able to easily take out Growlithe, and execute I go for Fly, and thankfully I don't miss. Next comes out Alakazam, which I will not one-shot with Swift if I don't have badge boost. Psybeam doesn't do too, too much, but one attack from Blastoise is probably going to knock me out. I decide to go for Fly, but of course I miss, and all the while, Blastoise, which can use Water Gun, Bubble, or Withdraw, keeps spamming Withdraw, but don't forget, there is a 1 in 4 chance we get a critical hit, which we do, and if we got one more, we would have won, but of course, we don't. And although it looked like I was pretty close, this actually started to take many, many attempts because of how annoying it was to get by Blastoise. It just is very bulky, and with relying on Fly, it gives it two opportunities to use Withdraw, meaning critical hits were essential. Well, I adjusted my strategy a little bit. Since I'm going to level up after I knock out Pidgeot anyway, it makes sense just to go for Fly. And thankfully, Pidgeot doesn't lower my accuracy or damage me at all. So I'm at full HP heading to Growlithe. Against Growlithe, I'm going to go for Agility three times and hope it goes for Leer. Roar is fine because it doesn't actually do anything. But Leer would boost my attack even further. Not a big deal. I'm able to easily knock out Growlithe. I'm able to easily knock out Execute. And this time, I'm able to easily knock out Alakazam with Fly. It all comes down to Blastoise. Of course, it goes for Withdraw, but this time, Fly gets a crit. So it's going to be likely a 4-hit KO, unless I somehow get another crit. Definitely a little bit lucky, but hey, if you're going to do this battle 8 times, unsurprisingly one of them, you're going to get a couple critical hits in a row. It was at the perfect time, and maybe I could have used my rare candies here. It really does suck. There isn't any better move to use than Fly. I mean, Double Edge is possible. However, since it's only base 100 power, Fly actually does do a little bit more, and I don't get hit with Recoil when I use Fly, but one less turn it can use Withdraw. I thought about it, but this worked well enough. And now we have to battle Giovanni number two who might not be all that easy when you consider how much trouble I had with Giovanni number one. I didn't want to go back and heal, so I'm just going to go in with 90 HP. I'm going to use Swift against Nidorino. It's a 3 KO. It does hit with Horn Attack, but it's not a big deal. Against Kangaskhan, I'm going to go for Fly. I get a very lucky crit. Doesn't do much damage to me, and I'm able to knock it out. Against Rhyhorn, I'm just going to go for Swift. It sucks, and it's going to deal a ton of damage to me but I don't really have a better move. And this is the worst part of all. I can't set up badge boost because I level up just before Nidoqueen, but so long as it doesn't use something annoying like Body Slam, I should eventually knock it out with Fly and win. Unfortunately, it did use Body Slam my first two times, and so I actually lost. This was my third attempt at Giovanni number two. And while I thought of showing those battles, to be honest, the strategy here wasn't too interesting, and the reason I lost the first one is I used badge boosts against Nidorino, not knowing I would level up just before Kangaskhan. So that was a knowledge gap, and then the second time I misclicked. So I figured I'd just show you the successful one. The strategy wasn't really different, and I just happened not to play poorly. So, we have five gym badges. We've kind of struggled with some of the non-gym badge trainers, but the next gym leader is Sabrina. Very weak defense. We do know Fly. This might actually go fairly well. It also could go badly because my special is so bad, but hey, only one way to find out. I decide to set up one agility just in case Fly doesn't knock out Alakazam. Kadabra goes for Psybeam and it does great damage, but I should be fine here. I go for Fly and knock out Kadabra. 
Against Mr. Mime, I... No! Don't use barrier! That's what I didn't want to see! Oh, okay. Critical hit works. We're easily gonna knock out Venomoth with Fly. And now we just need to knock out Alakazam with one hit. Just please don't go for Reflect! What is with the game? And, oh, I don't think it would have one-shot anyway. That's not great. But if I do things a little differently, I think I'd have more HP. Let's try this again. All right, this time instead of setting up against Kadabra, I'm going to go for Fly right away. Please don't miss. Very good. One down. All right, Mr. Mime, no barrier. Very good. Oh, we don't one-shot. Interesting. The crit really did matter there. We'll knock it out this turn, but... That's not great. Venomoth is going to use Stun Spore because I'm Rock-type, so I'm just going to go for Fly. We're going to one-shot. Hopefully we outspeed. We should outspeed. All right, just don't use Reflect. Very good. All right, we're not going to knock it out, and honestly, I'm fine with Reflect there. That works perfectly. It took two attempts. We haven't had a first-try victory in a really, really long time against anybody. Like, I haven't been stuck on any of these trainers for a crazy long time, Rival Fievel's seven battles is the most I've had, but still, the fact I can't first try anything shows this run isn't nearly as easy as we hoped it might be. The lack of move diversity has really, really hurt Aerodactyl, and no trainer will it hurt more than Blaine. Sure, I don't need to worry as much about his fire moves, but I don't have any rock or ground moves I can use against him, so I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. Hopefully it goes really well. Well, it starts off pretty good. I go for Swift, and Growlithe is just going to keep going for Agility. In fact, both Ponyta and Growlithe will only go for Agility because it's classified as a Psychic move, and I'm a Rock-type, so they don't want to use Fire or Normal moves. This would let me set up Agilities and raise my attack, which will help. Unfortunately, after I knock out Growlithe, I'm unable to one-shot Ponyta with Fly, but it's not a big deal. Rapidash is going for Tail Whip. I think that's just luck that it keeps going for Tail Whip because it should be able to use fire moves since it doesn't know agility. Our K9, meanwhile, goes for all sorts of moves. I'm getting sort of lucky that it keeps missing me, but not so lucky that it ends up healing. But in the end, our K9 actually knocks itself out once it hits with Takedown after I'd gotten rid of most of its HP. So... As I'd hoped for, this battle went pretty well. And even though up to this point, Giovanni has been rather tricky, I have my own trick up my sleeves to ensure that the next battle is an absolute joke, maybe even more than this one was. It doesn't start off great. I mean, it's not like it's going to be difficult, but I need to badge boost against Rhyhorn because it's going to take a really long time to knock it out. I use Fly... And then I use Swift. It doesn't really make a difference because Fly is a two-turn attack anyway. So, yeah, we just have to knock Rhyhorn out. Then we can mimic Dugtrio's Dig. And yes, it's also a two-turn attack, but hopefully it will one-shot everything for the rest of the battle. We do one-shot Queen, but then we level up, so we don't one-shot King, And that means we're not going to one-shot Rhydon. We actually get a critical hit, which is why it was a two-hit KO. So, it was very easy, but not very quick. That's okay. You can see, we're going to level up in the middle of the Rival 6 battle, so I need to pay attention to that. But, so far, if I had to describe the run, I would say it's been, I don't know, interesting. We've had trouble with every single trainer, but like I just said, none of the trouble has really held me back for too long. With that said, the next 6 battles tend to be the trickiest, so let's hope they're not too bad. Against Pidgeot, things are going to be fine. It will only go for agility because it's a psychic move. And as you saw with previous trainers, it's not not very effective. Weird thing to say. But the rest of its moves are bad AI in Generation 1, or good AI as it's called. So I do end up using agility because I don't think I can set up against any of the rival's Pokemon. And it'll make Rhyhorn a little quicker. But not an ideal situation to be sure. Against Rhyhorn, I just go for Swift. It hits me with Tail Whip a few times, which is actually bad. Again, if I weren't going to level up, this would all be amazing. But as you see, I do. And so Growlithe, I one-shot, but it just went for Agility. That gives me an idea. Anyway, we're going to knock out Execute, but I miss against Alakazam with Fly, and it uses Psychic, nearly knocks me out. 
I actually will knock it out with fly, so that's kind of cool. But as we saw, Blastoise, it's going to go for withdraw. Unless I get a whole bunch of crits, we're just going to do nothing. So I'm just going to wait for it to knock me out, and then I'm going to level up and try again. <laughs> Alright, you know what? That was really lucky, but we're just going to keep it. That was hilarious. I'm okay with that. The other strategy would have been to either use Agility versus Growlithe, which would have been fine, or to level up. I, I, the Growlithe thing would have worked. It's fine. Let's keep it. It's not going to help us much against the champion anyway. So if Aerodactyl is going to lose a bunch of time, it's really not going to be here. We also have the rare candies, which I'm going to use before Laura Lee anyway. And oh my god, I'm not looking forward to this. Laura Lee has Cloyster, which is very bulky defensively. I don't, like, I could teach Fire Blast, but that's not going to do very much. I don't have anything. I have nothing. And both Clamp and Aurora Beam, they're super effective against me. This is going to be absolutely brutal. You know what? I don't even want to talk about it. Let's just show the battle. A couple things to note. I did use my Rare Candies, and because of that, I have Hyper Beam. We've wanted to use that move for a while. Here's the problem, though. I use Agility to get a little bit of a boost. It doesn't really help. It's not really important what Dugong does, and I'll explain why in just a second, but I'm going to go for Hyper Beam and miss. This is a big reason I don't like using Hyper Beam. It can miss 10% of the time. I then go for Fly to see how much damage I'm going to do, and it does about half. Surprisingly, I'm actually able to knock out the Dugong, but at 10 HP, we're not going to do anything to Cloyster. This isn't going to work. I have a badge boost set up. I go for Hyper Beam. I do half. That doesn't work because Hyper Beam in every other game... When you use it the next turn, you can't attack. In Generation 1 only, when you use Hyper Beam and knock out an opponent, that recharge turn gets skipped. Which means I can only use Hyper Beam if I am positive that it would knock out an opponent in one hit. Which it won't do. It's not even doing half. So a couple more badge boosts wouldn't help. I'm going to need to level up. Before I did that, I did battle Loralee a few more times. And this one is of note. I actually used two agilities, so that's two badge boosts. And Hyper Beam still isn't one-shotting Dugong. So even if I somehow were able to do that, it wouldn't be enough to knock out the Dugong, let alone Cloyster. And that's just not going to work. So I might have to level up even more than I think I do. This is not going to be fun. This is as good a time as any to mention that Aerodactyl is in the slow level up group, so this takes a long time. I did go to the power plant and get one more rare candy, so I'm at level 60 now. I'm going to go for Fly, and it does about half to Dugong. I'm going to knock it out and see how much I do to Cloyster with Fly. I miss, and then get crit. Beautiful. Now this battle is as good a time as any to mention that I don't save after using rare candies, because then it would make it harder to level up. So, in fact, I have 12 rare candies in my bag that I have to use on Aerodactyl before I try another attempt. And Aerodactyl also learns Hyper Beam. At least it doesn't have to evolve. That's really annoying. Still, this is not fun. Anyway, I knock out Dugong again. This time I actually get to Cloyster. Fly without a badge boost is not even doing half. That's not great. Now, I battle Loralee 10 more times before this attempt. And the only reason I show it is because we get a critical hit. So now we have full health heading to Cloyster. We hit with Fly, no crit. We get hit with Clamp. It only lasts three turns. But then after I hit with Fly this time, Clamp misses. Because of that, I'm able to make it to Slowbro. And my strategy once I make it to Slowbro is to use Mimic on Amnesia. This should not only boost my attack even further, but also shield me from Blizzard, Water Gun, etc. Unfortunately, Slowbro goes for either Water Gun or Withdraw, so that's not amazing. And I'm missing with Fly a little bit. I actually might get knocked out by Slowbro if this continues. I've missed for now a second time. Thankfully, I finally get that 1 in 4 crit, and we should be good for the rest of this battle. I'm going to go for Hyper Beam just to be... Are you kidding me? Come on! Oh, no. I'm positive that if I knocked out Jinx, I could have knocked out Lapras. Oh, this is terrible. And it's taken me forever just to knock out Cloyster one time. This is not good. Well, what if I told you in my very next attempt, I actually do make it to Lapras? Because I do. How? Well, this time, Dugong decides to go for rest. So I set up a couple badge boosts. I go for fly. And this is where it all goes wrong. Hyper Beam probably would have knocked it out. 
but I went for fly, it didn't, and then Aurora Beam lowered my attack. I can knock out Dugong, but it doesn't seem likely I'd knock out Cloyster, right? Wrong, because I got a critical hit my first turn I hit with Fly, and although Clamp does some damage, I am able, with a Hyper Beam, Clutch Crit, to knock out Aerodactyl. I'm actually just trying to lose at this point, yet somehow, Slowbro doesn't knock me out. I hit Jinx with Fly, but then I hit against Lapras, and without those Amnesia Badge Boosts, with the lowering of my attack via Aurora Beam, I do next to nothing, and I realize this isn't going to work. I mean, a critical hit fly should knock out Cloyster if I have any chance. There's just too much that needs to go right in order for me to win, so it's time to go back and level up a little bit more. Alright, now I'm at level 64, and I go for Hyper Beam. It doesn't quite knock out Dugong. I was really hoping an unboosted Hyper Beam would do that. But thankfully, Loralee cooperates amazingly with me, heals Dugong, and then goes to sleep, allowing me to set up the agilities I need, and I'm able to knock out Dugong with 138 HP remaining. Against Cloyster, I go for Fly, it's doing over half, and Clamp misses. So that's two down. Against Slowbro, I go for Fly at the beginning, but once I weaken it enough, I actually misclick and go for agility, but I meant to go for Mimic Amnesia. Once I've used all the Amnesias, I'm going to go for Fly, and I get the crit to knock it out quickly. I use Hyper Beam, and it doesn't miss versus Jinx. And Hyper Beam one-shots Lapras. It's taken me almost half an hour of real time, but I have finally defeated Loralee for the very first time. And I still have four more trainers to go. This isn't looking good, but... I will say that I don't expect the rest of these trainers to be as bad, albeit the next one, Bruno, surprisingly, might end up being the most annoying. And I'll just play the battle to show you why. Bruno's easy. It's a terrible matchup for Bruno against me. The only problem is Onyx, I don't have a good move to use against it. It's actually even worse than before because I've deleted Swift in favor of Hyper Beam, and Hyper Beam requires the recharge. So it actually makes more sense to go for Fly, because the turn you're in the air, you can't get hit by Rock Throw or Rage, or whatever it is that Onyx will use. Once I finally knock it out, I could mimic Ice Punch versus Hitmonchan, but I don't think that's a really smart idea. Instead, I'm going to knock it out, and against Hitmonlee, I'm going to mimic High Jump Kick. Thankfully, Hitmonlee cooperates. Mega Kick is not very effective, although it does get a critical hit, but that's okay. I'm going to go for Fly, it hits, and I knock out Hitmonlee. I'm going to go for High Jump Kick, it hits, and one-shots Onyx. And against Machamp, unsurprisingly, I'm going to go for Fly, and I one-shot Machamp. So, took a while to knock out Onyx, but overall, not too bad. And speaking of not too bad, I don't anticipate Agatha being too difficult. Fly, while not my favorite move because it takes a lot of time, it hits Ghost Pokemon, it does physical damage, and Aerodactyl has really good attack, Hilariously, this battle might end up being the easiest and most consistent, which is not how it usually goes. But let's see. What's most important is I need to one-shot Gengar and not have to set up anything. So I'm just going to go for Fly. Dream Eater misses because I'm in the air. And... Oh no. Okay. So it missed with Hypnosis. But that's not a good sign. We are able to knock it out, but I might need to level up just once more. Although that maybe is a range. Who knows? Maybe I'll win and we don't have to do this again. Against Golbat, I'm going to go for Hyper Beam. I hope it one-shots. And it does, albeit probably due to the crit. Not sure. Who cares? Two down. Haunter has way worse stats than Gengar. So I'm going to go for Fly. So long as I don't miss, I'm going to one-shot. Three down. Now, Arbok has similar stats to Golbat. So I'm going to go for Hyper Beam. If it knocks it out, which it does... That means I'll probably one-shot Golbat as well, and I won't one-shot Gengar, but it doesn't know Hypnosis, so we should be fine. It goes for Toxic, and even though Agatha heals while I'm in the air, it's just a Super Potion, so we're able to knock out Gengar, and as I predicted, the battle was, well, I guess not consistent because there's a range, but can be if I just level up probably once more. And hey, first try victory against Agatha, always relish that. We've made it to Lance, and the run might end right here. Because we're dealing with the Gyarados, it knows Hydro Pump, I'm not really sure what I can do, yeah. 
This could be bad. Honestly, the reason I keep talking about leveling up and I've been leveling up so much is because I know this Gyarados is probably going to be impossible or would have been impossible if I somehow defeat it without leveling up a ton. At worst, Fly needs to two-shot and it would be nice to get a crit, but only one way to find out if we actually will, we got a battle. Alright, turn when I go for Fly, it's going to spam Hydro Pump and unlike in later generations, it never runs out of power points. I'm going to hit, no crit, but over half, Hydro Pump hits, yeah. I told you guys, it's going to do a lot of damage. If we were at level 58, which is where I think we would have been if my first try was successful, that would have for sure knocked me out. Now I have to not miss with Fly, so that's pretty important, and I don't. So that's one down. I'm now going to just go for Hyper Beam. I can't afford to go for Agility. We knock out Dragonair in one hit, but I level up. So even if I'd gone for Agility, it would have been bad, but I'm not even going to do it against Dragonair number two. Because while I have very little HP left, I need all of it, probably, to take on Aerodactyl. I'm going to go for Fly, and I get a critical hit. It does just about half, over half. It goes for Hyper Beam, and no! Oh, that's not good, guys. That's, that's, that's bad. Ugh. So many things kind of went right in this run. I, I don't want to have to level up more. It just sucks if only we could learn Rock Slide. Why? I'm a rock Pokemon. Why did they decide that Aerodactyl somehow can't learn Rock Slide? It can't even learn it in Gen 2. It can in Gen 3 and beyond. And to be fair, in Gen 2, it's not a TM, but it's so ridiculous. Like, inexplicable. Like, I understand. Lickitung can't learn Lick. Ha ha ha. It's a TM. Come on. Well... I guess I'll just try again, why not? I'm going with a three strikes you're out system. By out, I mean leveling up. So this is run number three. I'm gonna use fly, I get the clutch crit. So I have max HP for Cloyster. I then get another clutch crit against Cloyster. And then when clamp hits, it doesn't last too long. So I'm able to knock it out with 144 hit points. This should be more than enough. I need to go for agility. Actually, I should probably go for Amnesia after Water Gun did a bunch of damage, because that will reduce that damage. In fact, had I not had all that HP, I might have lost. I'm only at 52. I'm going to go for Hyper Beam, and there we go. There's the crit. I'm going to go for Hyper Beam against Jinx. No crit needed. And as we saw before, Hyper Beam will one-shot Lapras. So I can kind of take a breather against Bruno, and I really hope the first Gengar is a range. I'm not going to set up agility. I know that would make it consistent, but at the end of the day, it just kind of has to work. Agility is one more opportunity for Gengar to hit me. I'm going to go mimic high jump kick. Oh, come on. So I just mimicked mega kick because I apparently can't read. You know what? I have mega kick. I'm going to use against Onyx. There's the critical hit. And you know what? I don't care that this thing only has, what, 75 accuracy? We're going to use it, and somehow we keep hitting with it. That's fun. But, yeah, I hope this Agatha battle is also fun. If Fly's a range, I'll be pretty happy. Come on. Be a range. Be a pal. Let's do it. We're going to use Fly. Yes, it was a range. All right. And Hyper Beam does just naturally one-shot Golbat. Okay. So unless we get like the worst luck in the universe with Confuse Ray or something, we're going to knock out Gengar number two. We get Super Potion. So we've made it all the way back to Lance. We didn't even lose a single hit point, but we kind of need either Hydro Bump to miss or Aerodactyl to cooperate. I don't really see another path forward, but I will say it's nice to make it back to Lance so quickly. Let's make the most of it. All right, so I'm going to go for Fly. A critical hit would be Clutch. We don't get it. Hydro Bump hits, a miss would have been clutch, but we're in the same situation as last time, going into Dragonair number one. I go for Hyper Beam, crit didn't matter, we knock out Dragonair number one, Hyper Beam again, knock out Dragonair number two. This time, after I use Fly, Aerodactyl goes for Bite. I go for Fly again, it goes for Bite again, we might have just won. Okay, we beat Aerodactyl, but now we need to one-shot Dragonite with Hyper Beam, Please be a one-shot. Come on. Yes. Although maybe that crit mattered. 
You know what? I'll take it. This has been an annoying Elite Four to this point. And it's only our first time making to the champion. And it's not as if Rival 5 or Rival 6, they haven't been a walk in the park. There is a Blastoise. And that Blastoise has Hydro Pump. It has Blizzard. It's not going to be fun. I do have an idea. It's a terrible idea. But it could theoretically work. There is a better than 50% chance that I win. But that's still not as high as you'd like. Whatever. Only one way to find out if Luck's going to be on my side. Let's do this. Against Pidgeot, I think about it, and I decide to set up an agility. It goes for wing attack, does nothing. And you know what? I might not level up in the middle of this battle. I wasn't quite sure. So I'm just going to set up all of them. There's not much Pidgeot can do to me. And yeah, let's go. It's going to go for sky attack. Not before I use hyper beam. One down. Alakazam, we just need to hit with hyper beam. We do. Two down. Right on, I'm going to go for Fly. I hit, it's doing like a fifth. It goes for Leer, so Fly is going to do slightly more damage. When I land, it goes for Fury Attack, but it only hits twice. Unfortunately, it's still just not doing enough. And then I get a five turn Fury Attack. On my next turn, going for Fly, I miss, but Rhydon also misses. And after what feels like an eternity, I finally knock out Rhydon, which did pretty decent damage to me, honestly. Next comes out Arcanine. I'm going to go for Hyper Beam. I really need it to one-shot? It does. Okay. So now we need a little bit of luck. I'm going to go for Mimic against Executor, and I'm going to Mimic Hypnosis. It needs to not go for Hypnosis. It went for Stomp. Why? I thought it had to go for Hypnosis. I'm very confused, but very happy because I can go for Fly. So long as I don't miss, we're going to make it to... Oh my god. Thank goodness it went for Barrage, but I can't believe it tanked a fly. Wow, that was not something I saw coming. Okay, curveball there. But getting back to what I was going to say, if I hit with Hypnosis against Blastoise, we win, I think. There's a good chance we win. We just need to hit. Please hit yes. All right, but now I need to go for Hyper Beam, and I need Blastoise to stay asleep because it's going to be a 2 a KO. So let's go for Hyper Beam. Yes! Okay, so that works. Another clutch critical hit to finish off a battle. What a weird run, to be quite honest with you. I have no idea where to rank this thing. Because, yes, there were tons of lucky crits. But like I said at the beginning, it's a 1 in 4 chance. So it's not crazy I'm getting crits. The timing may have been good in the last few battles. But... It is something built into the strategy that I'm going to get a fair number of crits. After looking at my tier list, and I'm very happy I split them up because it's so much easier to look at now, I decided Aerodactyl clearly goes in the same tier as Moltres. They have nearly identical results, albeit Aerodactyl had a much easier time versus Brock than Moltres, but both of them had their struggles. They both are around the same level, the same time, I do think Moltres, because it's one level lower and the Brock disadvantage, it should get a higher placement. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed. Even without Rock Slide, I thought Aerodactyl would do pretty well. But Lorelei was just too tough. We needed too many more levels. And maybe if I were to do this again, I'd gain more levels throughout. And that would make other battles easy and I'd be at a higher level going to Lorelei. But that's the fun of these runs. It's my first attempt. I never know how it's going to go. And people always ask, how am I able to keep doing this again and again? Each run's kind of something new. And this run, if nothing else, felt pretty unique, and so I'm happy about that. Anyway, if you notice the nicknames, there is a hint to the next video you're about to see. And longtime fans of the channel, I mean really old fans, yes, finally, it's happening. Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, you'll find out soon. It's going to be a great video. All the best, everyone. Take care.